What's the best boat for you? Whether you're fishing the flats for bonefish or trout, heading offshore trolling for dolphin, or bottom fishing for grouper, Florida Sportsman's Best Boat will provide the information you need to decide which boat is the best boat for you. Florida Sportsman's boating editor and trusted selected experts have traveled to some of Florida's hottest fishing locations to review the latest in outboard technology, as well as run 36 boats in 12 different classes, including flats boats, bay boats, and center consoles. Today on Florida Sportsman's Best Boat, we are on the Indian River at the Stewart Inlet, where the inshore fishing for snook and trout here can only be matched by the near shore kingfish and cobia action. Our host, Dave East, boating editor of Florida Sportsman Magazine, will be joined by Captain Craig Korzynski, a light tackle fishing guide who specializes in targeting a wide variety of inshore and light offshore species. Dave and Craig will take the class of 26-foot bay boats perfectly suited for this type of fishing and put them through their paces. They'll be conducting walkthroughs, test drives, and reviewing key features, all to help you decide if this is the best boat for you. Welcome to this episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. I'm your host, Dave East, boating editor of Florida Sportsman Magazine. And today we're at the Four Fish Marina in Jensen Beach to look at three 26-foot bay boats. You know, sometimes bigger is just better, and that may be the case in this relatively new style of boat that's making waves in the industry. I'm talking about the versatile bay boats in the 26-foot range. This class of supersized bay boats seems to be spurred on by two factors. One where the demographics of the buyer is a little older but still an avid angler and just wants more comfort. The second is the need for a more versatile boat that can do hardcore fishing in the morning and take the family to the sandbar in the afternoon. Hull design is key to give these bay boats the ability to handle a lot rougher water. Some manufacturers have decided to stay with their proven hull design while others have decided to venture out and use a stepped hull. These new bay boats go far beyond the ability of catching sails and dolphin in the morning and redfish and trout on the way back to the dock. You might say that a 26-foot bay boat is capable of starting a whole new style of fishing. The three boats that we chose to represent this class are the Seaborn FX25, the Shearwater 25 LTZ, and the Contender 25 Bay. The Seaborn FX25 has a stepped hull with a 105-inch beam and a 25-foot 5-inch LOA. This boat has a taller freeboard for light offshore duty and strikes a good balance between rough water performance and shallow draft. The entire boat is foam filled for sound and temperature insulation plus unsinkable safety. The max horsepower rating is 300 and 75 gallons of fuel ensures plenty of range. The two plumbed wells, 35 gallons and 65 gallons, gives ample life support for your bait and the stern layout allows an open cockpit design, leaving plenty of room for an aft flip-up seat. The Shearwater 26 LTZ sits at the top of their bay boat line and is loaded with fishing and family features to pull triple duty as an offshore capable fishing platform, a backcountry stalker, and a sandbar family retreat. The beam is 8 foot 6 inches and the LOA is 25 feet 1 inch. 125 gallons fuel capacity extends the boat's endurance. Even with the max 350 horsepower for a single outboard application are twin 200 horsepower outboards. Their high-performance hull design is capped with a well-thought-out interior that combines a large front casting deck and an open cockpit aft. Two small plum pitch wells flank the stern flip-up seating. In keeping with Contender's tradition of producing hardcore fishing machines, the Contender 25 Bay carries on that legacy with the only twin-stepped hull in the class. The overall length of 25 feet 4 inches is combined with an 8 foot 6 inch beam. Plus, they decided to go with bow and stern casting decks to accommodate several fishermen. Amenities include an insulated cooler, insulated fish box, 40 gallon live well, 12 and a half gallon bait well, and rod storage. You really feel the thrill of the max 350 horsepower and long runs will be easy and comfortable with a leaner seat, two aft deck jump seats, in addition to 90 gallons of fuel capacity. 
Having a size hull to venture far offshore, but yet also fish the backwaters, is why a 26-foot bay boat is so popular and may just be the best boat for you. For more information on the Best Boat series, pick up a copy of our new magazine, Florida Sportsman Best Boat at Newsstands, or visit us on the web at floridasportsman.com. Up next, Dave and Craig will take you through our featured 26-foot bay boats. There's plenty more to come, so stick around for more Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This segment is brought to you by the best-in-class Evinrude E-Tech 150-horsepower outboard engine. Proven power, proven reliability. Evinrude E-Tech has been outperforming four-stroke engines for years. But what about the latest 150 four-strokes that claim to deliver two-stroke-like torque? See the proof for yourself. Get your free DVD now and watch how the two-stroke Evinrude E-Tech 150 outpulls and out-accelerates the four-stroke competition. See how it wins when it comes to maintenance, ease of winterization, and more. Evinrude E-Tech is the true champion. Go to Evinrude150challenge.com and get your free DVD now. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman's Best Boat. Let's get back to Dave and Craig as they review our featured 26-foot bay boats. First thing I noticed with this boat, it has a massive deck. And that's one thing you like, especially if you're gonna go out fishing or if you are gonna take the family out, the family can actually lay on the deck, you know, get some sun and uh, basically enjoy the, the, the boat. I like the fact that it's got a tow rail. Yeah, it's well, very my, important. My foot gets to the edge, I know that I'm right there, so I don't end up going over. The anchor locker on this boat is huge. You can fit a big anchor, you can fit lots of rope, you could probably fit two anchors in there if you'd like. Now the live well on this thing is huge. Rounded corners, so your baits are not gonna get in the corners and die, but like I said, you can, you can store a ton of bait in this bait well here. Yeah, and another thing is too, I mean, if you got two guys up here and they're fishing, you don't have to tell that guy to stand aside because you can easily access the hatch here for the bait well too. Right. The best feature is you've got rod storage and you have tubes that run to the bow. So I can put four rods on this side, four rods on that side. You can lock them, they're secure, they're out of the way, but if you need them, readily accessible. Um, starting from the front, the anchor locker, very nice. All your lines down the bottom, all the chains down there. Your trolling motor plug is very accessible as well. It's right there, easy access. Well, important on any boat, and especially a bay boat of this stature, is storage. You never can have enough storage. You gotta have a place to put all of your stuff. Yeah, and this is nice too, because it, you can see, you put all your storage in here. Craig, one thing I really like about this comfortable console seating is that it's removable. It's a frigid, rigid cooler, but if you don't want it on the boat, you can take it off. Or if you want to get access to the bottom part of the console, you can by removing the cooler. It's not necessary because the console does flip up like this. Or if you need to get access to the back of your electronics, swing that door open and show them the access. It's right there. You can reach it real quick, shut everything off, or turn everything back on. Starting with the anchor locker, you got plenty of storage in here. You can fit a big uh, Danforth in here. Coming back here, you got a pitch bait well, which this will, you know, this is great for shrimp, crustacean. This is actually plumbed. It's got a recirc well and a, uh, a main pump. Have enough storage for your dive gear or anything that you might want to take a long trip. This is a very important part of the boat, I think. Absolutely. I mean, as far as for dive gear, but not only when, you know, for me, when I deal with people, they also bring, you know, important valuables. Okay, this rod locker here on the starboard side, this holds nine rods. You can fit nine spinners, nine bait casters. A lot of room, 18 rods, and you can lock them. So if you're in the keys, lock all your stuff up, go up to your room, Absolutely. it's secure. You do lock, so a lot of times too, if you're going, say you've got to run into Publix and you're, and you're going to the, to the boat ramp, you can lock everything up. You do not have to worry about anything. So this is an important feature, I think, to have on a boat, is a lot of bow seating. It's comfortable for the family. Even after a hard day of fishing, it's a good place to sit back and relax. Let's check in with Dave East as he presents the Florida Sportsman Best Boat Seminar Series. Hey Dave, let me show you that jack plate switch. If you're gonna fish shallow water out of a flats boat or a bay boat, an essential piece of equipment is a jack plate. What it'll do is it'll enhance the performance of your boat, 
It's gonna give your boat more shallow water ability and it's gonna make you run faster across the flats. One thing you can do is if you don't have a jack plate, you can trim your engine up, but now look what it does to the angle of the thrust. What that's gonna do is it's gonna lift the bow and it's actually gonna hurt your ability to get off of a flat and you're gonna end up digging up the grass. So with a jack plate, you can bring the engine up, you can keep your thrust parallel, and you can get that boat on plane in much shallower water. Another benefit is you'll pick up speed. When you pull the jack plate up, it pulls the lower unit up higher in the water column, less drag, more speed, much more efficient operation. One thing you're gonna to wanna to be really careful about, don't over trim your engine. With your jack plate in the full upright position, you can pull your intake out of the water. What this does, this provides cooling water to your power head, and you'll overheat your power head. You may even have to go to a low water pickup if you wanna operate in really shallow conditions, so keep an eye on your water pressure gauge up on your gauge panel. Make sure that you're not starving your engine for cooling air. One important thing you wanna consider, size the jack plate to your engine. You don't want to undersize jack plate and put one of these big four strokes on the back of it. You'll end up torquing your jack plate or maybe doing damage to your outboard or even your uh, hull. There's several manufacturers that are making jack plates, so talk to the manufacturer and size the plate to fit your boat and to the size of your engine. So do some research, talk to the different manufacturers. Better yet, research on the Florida Sportsman Forum and maybe find another boat that is similar to yours that already has a jack plate with a similar size engine, you better gain a lot of good information that way. Up next, Dave and Craig will take you through our featured 26-foot bay boats. There's plenty more to come, so stick around for more Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This segment is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha forward thinking. The all-new F200 inline four-stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater, or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel-efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all-new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman's Best Boat. Let's get back to Dave and Craig as they review our featured 26-foot bay boats. All right, Craig, even though it's just a bay boat, look at the size of the console. Porta potty goes in there, or it is a lot of storage for all of your bags, overnight stuff. If you're gonna take a long trip down to the Everglades, maybe over to the Keys, even the Bahamas, all of your stuff can go in here. You open up this hatch here, easy access to the back of all your electronics. For maintenance, for installing your new stuff, so much easier. Yeah, most, I mean, that's most importantly too, because that way if you do blow a fuse, you can access everything through here. And like you said, the porta potty that's a girl's best friend. Yeah. You cannot go wrong with that. You're gonna make a long run over to the Keys, over to the Everglades, even just a normal day of fishing. How comfortable you are to sit and drive the boat is a huge factor. Yes, and it, everything here is accessible. All your switches, uh, as you can see, are sitting down. You can still reach everything. You can read all your gauges. And up here, you have a massive amount of room where you can actually put two units if you want. But one of the coolest features on this boat, it has misters. These misters are great, especially if you're going out in summertime and it's hot and you have your wife with you or your kids and people just want to get away from the sun, you know, under the shade and have some, some mist on them. That's a really cool feature to have. Another, another feature they've got incorporated into the seating is the insulated cooler. You've got a bait well on the bow. We also have a bait well on the stern, we'll see in a minute, but this can actually be a third bait well. Yeah. Plumb that way if you want to keep your bait separate. Yeah, this is nice because it's smaller. And once again, once you have your big baits up there, your greenies, and you don't want to be fondling all those baits, it's nice to keep the shrimp and the crabs or any crustaceans in this. But like you said, it's insulated. If you don't want to use it for a bait well, you can easily put your beer, soda, water, everything in there. It's very accessible. Right? Another feature, tackle storage. Can't have too much of that. Love it. For me, that's the best way. It keeps your tackle box. You don't have to keep it on deck. You can keep everything away. You keep the stuff that you're going to use consistently right there so you can grab it anytime you need. Right. And for the ladies, cup holders. <laughs> All right, Craig, I know we've talked about it before, but if you're going to fish a boat for any length of time, you're going to spend a lot of time behind the console. And it's very important to get a console that fits you and that you feel comfortable behind. The seating has to be right. The layout has to be good. 
put the throttle down, you want to be able to reach your trim tabs, reach your jack plate. All of that are important things to look for. Especially the biggest thing too is your, your GPS and your fish bar. You want to be able to view that, and especially with a T-top, the T-top helps to break down the sunshine so you can actually view your screen because a lot of times it gets blacked out. All right, in any boat, where do you spend most of your time? Behind the console. So it's very important to be comfortable. This console in particular, I've got a toe kick underneath. I'm comfortable to stand. I'm comfortable to sit. I can easily see over the windshield in either position. Yeah, what I like about it actually is it, you got plenty of room for rod holders, as you can see. This is very important too. Something to hold on to if you're not driving. The person that's trying, especially if I'm driving, you want to hang on. To yeah, that. yeah, you need something to grab onto. But not only that, all your electronics, your VHF, your radio, everything, all your switches, everything's right in front of you. You can see this very clearly in your windshield. It'll block the rain, so you can actually tuck down a little bit and not get pelted. Yeah, console layout is very important. You want your switches where they need to be. Everything needs to be easily accessible, where you don't have to be reaching around while you're running. Especially if you're offshore and it's rough. You need to be able to get to everything easily. Yeah, and your trim tabs are very accessible here too. I mean, while the throttle's down, you can sit there, and if you're get, taking a quartering seat, you can actually sit here and play with your trim tabs and actually get the boat running the way you want it to. Let's check in with Captain Craig Korzynski as he presents the Florida Sportsman Best Boat Seminar Series. Hi, I'm Captain Craig Korzynski. I'm a local fishing guy in the area. When rigging your bay boat, a great essential tool to have is a shallow water anchor. There's two manufacturers of shallow water anchors. There's Power Pole and Talon. Shallow water anchors come in six, eight, and 10 foot lengths. A six foot anchor will anchor in five feet of water. An eight foot anchor will anchor in about seven feet of water and a 10 in about nine feet of water. These are great tools to use when you're fishing docks, sea walls, or the flats. It's also a great tool to have if you're just with your family and you come up to a sandbar, you can put your shallow water anchor down. Shallow water anchors are great because they hold the boat in position and they stop you basically on a dime. A great feature when purchasing your shallow water anchor is a remote. The remote allows you to deploy your anchor anywhere from the vessel. The shallow water anchor also allows you not to hassle with the regular typical anchor. No ropes, no chains, quiet, swift, smooth. There's plenty more to come, so stick around for more Florida Sportsman's Best Boat. This segment is brought to you by Salt Life Sport Optics. See the Salt Life difference. Salt Life Sport Optics. Zeiss Lenses. Rypel Technology. Total UV Protection. Live the Salt Life. Minimize color distortion and glare to retain true color recognition. Combine lifestyle and high performance. Salt Life Sport Optics. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman's Best Boat. Let's get back to Dave and Craig as they review our featured 26-foot bay boats. Dave, we're here on the back of the Shearwater and we have this massive live well here. And this is great for the guys that are gonna venture offshore. They can put their blue runners, goggle eyes, or even if they wanna throw the cast net and put greenies in here and, and still venture offshore as well. Also, a good feature back here, this has a freshwater wash down and saltwater wash down, and also has a little sink. So if you're cleaning your hands, you get the fish guts on you or you get blood on something, you can go ahead and wash it off right in here and this drains right out. We have a good storage box back here. This is a fish box and this is great because when you're offshore and you have a fish on, say you're dolphin fishing or king fishing, anything that with teeth, it's great to be able to take the fish, flip them in here, and no one's feet are in the way. And then you just take, once the fish is in, you just close it. And Let him go crazy in there until he settles down. Let him die. Yeah. These are actually pitch wells. And these are unique because you can actually have your rod in a rod holder and have your live bait on. You just go ahead and drop it over and your baits are still swimming around in there. It's very accessible, very easy. Craig, another feature I love about this seat, more storage. Yeah, for me, this is another important part of a vessel. I, I like to keep my cell phone here, my wallet, and most importantly, my camera. Yeah, well, we've got VHF, VHF radio, pliers, everything, and it's all right everything here. Everything in there, paper towels. 
Everything's accessible very quick. It folds down. One of the family features I love about this contender is stern seating. I take my wife and kids to the sandbar. They've got a good, comfortable place to sit while we're on the way to get there. Hey, one of the fishing features I like is this massive well here. Now, if you're venturing offshore, this well, you could fit four dozen baits in there, which is Huge. massive. Or if you're going to go inshore, you could throw the net and put basically black out of the well with greenies and go chumming if you want to do something like that. It also has a crustacean well, which is also nice to have too. But the biggest thing that I like about these, if you look, you, this actually has a grip on it. This is like a clear all grip. This is great. It's a great feature because a lot of the times these clear decks, if you walk on them without shoes or even with shoes, it's very slippery. Incorporated into the comfortable seating on this boat is a 65 gallon live well. This is huge. Uh, you can fit a ton of bait in here. The biggest thing that draws attention to this, it, it has a window on the back. The cross flow I like he has in here too. The water circulates in a counterclockwise motion. LED light, drain right in the center of the bottom. Yep. It's nice to have rounded corners. That way your baits don't beat themselves up. And the other thing I like too, it actually has a tinted blue, which some people, they like different colors, so it kind of keeps the baits calm. This is where you're gonna land a fish. You're gonna gaff him or you're gonna bring him up. And when you do, this is where he goes. Nice big insulated fish box. It's long, nice sized dolphin or a king will fit in there, no problem. After a long day of fishing, or if you're gonna take the family out, one thing you wanna have on your boat is stern seating. This is the most comfortable place to sit, and especially for a long run, this is where you're gonna find me. Now, if we're gonna be fishing, folds out of the way. There if we need it, if we don't, it's not in the way. If you've never been here to Jensen Beach, come by the Four Fish Marina. They've got a really nice facility. They have slips, they have fuel right next door, great accommodations at the River Palms. And they call this the Treasure Coast for a good reason, not for the ships that crashed offshore, but the fact that our river is loaded with snook, trout, redfish, tarpon. Our inlet is a short hop away. You can go offshore for kingfish, dolphins, sailfish, anything you want to catch in this one area. It's very laid back, it's got a little keezy feel to it. Your boat will be well protected inside the river. If you've got a 26 foot bay boat and you wanted to give it a good shakedown, this would be a great place to do it. But that's all we have time for. Thank you for tuning in. See you on the next episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Versatility, that's the best way to describe a boat that can fish for dolphin and grouper offshore, have a shallow enough draft that allows you to also target snook and redfish in the bay, plus take the family to the sandbar. If that sounds like the boat you're looking for, then a 26-foot bay boat may just be the best boat for you. Be sure to tune in next time to see more of the 36 boats we tested from skinny water capable 16-foot technical polling skiffs, all the way to Gulfstream fishing machines in the 42-foot center console class. From stalking bonefish on the flats to pelagics in the ocean, or if you prefer quality time with the family, let Florida Sportsman help find the best boat for you. Camera boat provided by Carolina Skiff. For more information on the Best Boat series, pick up a copy of our new magazine, Florida Sportsman Best Boat at newsstands, or visit us on the web at floridasportsman.com.